Hello and welcome to the recap of episodes one to three of Pretty Little Liars Original Sin, the new reboot. In episode one, it's New Year's Eve 1999 and we see a girl named Angela stumbling around at a party. She's distressed and her makeup is all messed up from crying and she's begging for help. She asks what looks like a friend of hers, Sydney, at one point for help, but another friend of theirs then, Davy, doesn't want to help Angela and she convinces Sydney to ignore Angela's cries for help. The girls go back to partying as the count down starts and just then everyone sees Angela up in the rafters in the roof and she jumps down to her death in the middle of the dance floor. 22 years later we see Davy as an adult and her daughter Imogen who is pregnant. A friend of Imogen's then comes over to the house, Karen, but the vibes aren't really great between the girls. Karen then hands Davy an envelope that she says was left on her door and we see that it's a flyer from that party 22 years ago and on the back there's a note. Gone but not forgotten. You can't ignore the past forever the countdown is on. Turns out the girls are fighting because Imogen and Karen's boyfriend Greg kissed at a party. Anyway, they walk out into the hallway when they see water running on the ground and they find Imogen's mom dead in the bathtub with A written in blood on the wall. It appears that Imogen's mom Davy has taken her own life. One month later, Imogen is staying with an adult, Sydney, and her daughter, Tabitha. Later in the day, they go to leave the key to Imogen's house underneath the mat, and we see a shadow of someone in the house. So since her mother's death, Imogen has taken some time off school, but she's back now. At first, Karen pretends to be friends with her, checking if she's okay but then she whispers in Imogen's ear that nobody wants her pregnant self back at school. One of the girls, Noah, has been in trouble. She's kind of grounded, just out of juvie, and she has to pee in cups, so obviously drug-related issue. Then she gets an anonymous text telling her not to do the crime if she can't do the time. In fact, all of the girls start getting anonymous texts. Tabby gets one asking what her favorite movie is. Imogen also gets a text telling her to look out the window and when she looks, she sees a figure, a man maybe. She looks away and she looks again and the man has disappeared. Then a girl named Farron, Karen's rival in ballet, gets the part of the black swan. She gets an anonymous text as well, telling her that she'll slay as the black swan. One of the other girls, Mouse, also gets an anonymous text. So what do all these girls have in common? Well, their mothers were all there at the party the night that Angela died. And some of the mothers, like Davies, ignored Angela's pleas for help that night. This could be a sins of the father type thing, or in this case, sins of the mother. And the girls are all in situations where it's clear that they might be being watched. For example, Farron sees a figure in the ballet studio that disappears. Noah sees someone watching her during her community service, etc. But they can never get a full view of the person or follow them because this person just seems to disappear. Later, when Imogen, who's six months pregnant at this point, goes to her old house, she finds the pamphlet that was sent to her mom and she later shows Tabitha. She's confused about what this means because she feels as though her mother wouldn't have just left her by taking her own life. Meanwhile, back at school, it turns out that Karen has gone to the principal and mentioned that somehow Imogen's presence at the school being pregnant upsets the other students or something. So the school does suggest that maybe they're not equipped to help Imogen. Imogen then goes and confronts Karen about this in a big kind of showdown in the cafeteria. She decides then she, that she's going to stay at school. And not only that, she will be running against Karen for Spirit Queen. We see then that Karen's home life is pretty strict with her dad, who's like the sheriff, pressuring her to be the best. He's disappointed that she didn't get the lead in the ballet. And I should mention that he's overseeing Noah's community service. So there's a connection there. And Noah at one point catches him in a compromising position with a young man in his car. The school janitor then finds the stalker's lair. And by stalker, I mean the person who's watching and following the girls, A. And on his desk, we see Karen's spirit queen posters, a pair of points, and a bunch of other creepy stalker things. The janitor is about to confront the stalker, but he's promptly murdered by him or her. Then all of the girls have things happen to them. Razor blades are found in Karen's points and her campaign posters are vandalized. So, so obviously Farron, her ballet rival, is blamed for the former and Imogen for the latter. Noah's routine drug test mysteriously shows up as positive and Mouse is blamed for putting a dead and bloody mouse in Karen's bag. This is how all the girls end up in detention together. While they're all in detention, Imogen suggests that they kill Karen because she's basically making their lives hell. I don't know if she's being sarcastic, by the way. Anyway, Anyway, in episode two, we're taken back six months. Imogen isn't pregnant yet, and Imogen and Karen are still friends. They're at a party, and Imogen's drinking quite a bit. Everyone is. She goes looking for Karen's boyfriend, Greg, so that he can do something for Karen. 
then Karen finds out that Imogen and Greg kissed. It's clear that Greg was flirty and inching towards Imogen. Like Imogen even says that he kissed her and that's the moment they were caught. But Karen slut shames her in front of everybody and chases her out the house. Imogen says then in the present day that there's a messy video of Karen that would destroy her if it came out. Tabitha offers to screen it at the cinema that she works at. Anyway, they go to this pizza place and they watch the video and Imogen is the person who knows whose phone this is and where this video comes from. She doesn't say anything though. So all of the girls get texts then from the stalker and it shows videos of A committing the crimes that put them into detention. So we see a gloved hand putting blades into the point shoes, for example. The girls then decide that they want to release the video of drunk Karen after all, because they still believe that Karen sabotaged herself and blamed the girls. Tabby will host a screening of a Jordan Peele movie, and it looks like she's going to show it before her screening of the movie. We see that the stalker is at the screening as well. He's watching the girls from the distance, or she. Then there's a video of drunk Karen disparaging Greg's sexual performance and drunkenly flirting with another guy. This is the video that could socially destroy her. Anyway, it's very upsetting to Karen and she runs out of the theater, humiliated. It's bad. I'm not sure if we're meant to be rooting for the liars girls at this point, but I'm surely not. Imogen later has doubts about what they did, but everyone's like, no, it's fine. Karen deserved it. We see a memory then of Imogen's mom telling her that Karen is a bully and a mean girl and that she doesn't like her. She also, Imogen's mom, warns Imogen not to become like Karen. In the present day, Karen and Imogen meet at night in the cemetery and Imogen explains that the night Karen kicked her out of the party she went back to get her sweater which she'd forgotten and that's when she saw Tyler recording Karen and egging her on to say all these ridiculous and drunk things on camera. That's when Imogen got Tyler's phone, took it, kept the video, but she also did kind of save Karen from Tyler. By the way, we see in the background of the cemetery that the stalker or A is watching them. Karen then goes and pulls out of the Spirit Queen race slash campaign. She tells the principal that Imogen deserves to be Spirit Queen. We found out then that actually this is all part of Karen and her twin sister Kelly's plan to somehow sabotage Imogen and get her back. So all of the girls decide that they're going to go to the dance together because Imogen was told by the principal that she will be crowned spirit queen. She does plan on apologizing to Karen and giving the crown back though. As everyone is at the dance, we see the stalker heading over to the school as well. He's very busy. Eventually, Imogen is announced Spirit Queen and once she gets up on stage and is crowned, the girls warn her to look up and she sees that Karen is about to drop a bucket of paint on her. Just then though, A attacks Karen and pushes her and Karen falls to her death. The girls all get an anonymous text then. To thine own self be true. One bully down, five more to go. Keep quiet about me or you're next. In episode three, the girls all talk about how Karen was actually pushed. Tabitha's mother is really concerned because this is reminiscent of the Angela incident 22 years ago. She has a flashback telling her own friends about how guilty she felt about not helping Angela who'd begged for help just before her death. The girls also discuss the possibility that everything that's happened to them might not be Karen, it's A. Imogen tells Tabitha that the letter A was also written in blood on the bathroom wall at the scene of her mother's death. So she's the one connecting the dots to A, mostly. The girls are then all called into the principal's office because of the video that they screened at the cinema of Karen. Also, the paint bucket is nowhere to be seen, so nobody believes that Karen intended to humiliate Imogen. Then Karen's dad tells them that he'll want to start a criminal investigation into them. He thinks that they're responsible for his daughter's death. The committee wants the girls expelled. It's not going well for any of them. Imogen, by the way, has been doing research into the past and she goes to the warehouse, which was where the rave was 22 years ago and where Angela's body was found. And she sees a makeshift memorial plot there for Angela. Then she has to quickly hide because she hears somebody come in and it's the stalker or A, but she or he is distracted and they end up leaving. Imogen tells Tabby all about Angela and the fact that A was at the warehouse. Tabby wants to stake out the warehouse and possibly try to catch A. Noah at the nudging of the sheriff tries to encourage Mouse and Farron to turn on Imogen and Tabby. The sheriff is thinking that a divide and conquer strategy might be the best option because he wants justice for his daughter, but he really is a bad man himself. Later, when Tabby and Imogen go and set up a secret camera, Tabitha's mother comes there to pay her respects. That's what she says she's doing. She tells them then about Angela and the fact that Angela did have some mental health issues in the past. By the way, Wes, Tabby's boss at her movie theater job, has been putting moves on Tabby in a 
a weird way that seems to, well, it's actually workplace harassment, to be honest, because of their ages and the fact that he's her boss. He invites her for dinner and he tells her that he will give her back the flash drive that has the Tyler video of drunk Karen on it. Tabitha ends up stealing it and running off. The guy's giving her the creeps. She's giving us all the creeps, trying to offer her red wine and whatnot. Noah reveals to her boyfriend that the night that she got arrested and eventually sent to juvie, she actually took the fall for her mother. She wasn't the one using the drugs. Karen's mother curses at Imogen for showing up at Karen's funeral and she says that she hopes that Imogen's baby is taken from her like her own child Karen was taken. Karen and Kelly's father then also swears revenge on the liars, the people who he thinks had a hand in his daughter's death. Kelly then goes to the school though and surprisingly admits that Karen sabotaged herself and so the girl's expulsion is revoked. We don't know why she did this but I mean she has to live under the same roof as her scary evil father and I assume that she doesn't know what he's capable of or maybe she does, even worse, and that she doesn't want harm to come to the girls. Also, she does mention that maybe Karen did take her own life, implying that the pressure on her was just too much. And then there's the fact that she and Karen had cooked up the plan to carry Imogen at the dance, so she knows that the girls aren't really responsible. So the girls all go to the cemetery then to pay their respects and to apologize to Karen. And across the street, they see that the stalker is parked there watching them. And this is the first time that it seems like they might be able to confront him. And that's the end of episode three of Pretty Little Lies Original Sin. This show is not great. If it were the CW or the ABC, maybe I'll kind of get it, but this seems to be an HBO Max production. I don't know, I was just expecting a little bit more. Am I gonna carry on with this? Yeah, maybe, why not? It could get better. If you've seen it, feel free to share your thoughts and thank you for watching.